So this past couple of weeks I've been reasonably busy like finishing off and putting together the Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone. It isn't quite finished yet, it, uh, we're about, we're nearly about, we've got about 80-85% of the way there and hopefully next week we'll see uh, the next update on the Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone. It's been a lot of work and it is a lot of work and it got me thinking like what can I do for a video uh, like this week and uh, I just had this uh, idea like jump up in the back of my head a couple of days ago and I really want to give it a go. So what I was thinking was, wouldn't it be cool if we could get Cosmo, my modular synthesizer, to play Super Mario on the Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES, or if you're American, the NES or whatever. But I've had this NES ever since I did the video regarding the Fami Mimi Midi, which I've also made a one hour long soundtrack. Uh, the link is in the description, it's on my other channel, the Museum of Everything Else. But yeah, if you want to listen to an hour of like this, jumping off in, in a ambient glory then uh, go and check it out over there anyway that kind of took me on to the idea of like wouldn't it be cool if i could get the synth to play a game so first things first we should refresh ourselves of the controls and stuff like that uh, in super mario and see how the heck we could possibly make that work super mario so let's turn it on and let's have a go so uh yeah i've got the version that is the bundle of super mario and duck hunt definitely need to do a project with the duck hunt gun but today is not the day for that we're gonna play super mario so yeah if you unless you live under a rock you know what super mario is you know this song you know the whole thing and yeah it doesn't mean that i'm any good at it but I'm really bad at games, to be perfectly honest with you. Ooh. Oh! Oh, I never did! Oh, oh what a plunker! Oh. So it's really simply simple controls. It's mainly going forwards, backwards, and jumping. So the next thing I think we need to do is make a really quick and dirty uh, kind of converter to talk between the NES and the modular synthesizer. So what the plan is, is to take this controller and basically try and find a way of making it talk to the synthesizer by plugging in like jacks into the controller somehow and yeah, figuring that out. And it turns out it's gonna be rather simple. I found this really good image on allaboutcircuits.com, the link's in the description, but this is basically the schematic of the controller. As you can see, it's got a shift register in it and this shift register talks to the NES so there's a shift register in here and basically it's got eight buttons and each of these buttons goes to a designated bit pin on the shift register and then it goes to ground. So what we need to do really simply is basically make a, put a transistor, which is right here, a 2N304 transistor and acts as like um, a electronically triggered switch and which sends these buttons, these pins to ground. And yeah, it just so happens that last night I actually figured it out and did it. I actually did it on a builder's live stream on my Patreon uh, last night. I basically turned on the camera and just said, got this idea, gonna give it a go. And three hours later, I had it built. Let's have a look at what we have. And this is what I came out with from that three hours. Basically, it's a controller on a box with a bunch of jacks and LEDs in it. Yeah, that is, that is what it is. And as you can see, basically what happens is each of these buttons has a designated jack socket. And this jack socket, you can plug something in and it acts as the button. So you can send a trigger from a synthesizer or something into any of these jack sockets and it will press the button. I'm also making a video right now on my other channel about what's going on inside of here. And also, if you want to see the Builders live stream, well, it's still up on the Patreon. You can watch it back and stuff. So yeah, anyway, but I'll be talking in detail on the other video. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out. But without further ado, let's uh, plug it in and see what the heck happens. As you can see, it still actually functions like a very unwieldy and very unusable controller, but we can still run over these uh, kind little fellows. Hey, ooh, ooh, ah. Oh, but anyway, let's plug in a jack socket and see what happens, shall we? So just for testers right now, we're gonna plug in this low frequency oscillator and you can see the actual speed, uh, which is pushing out voltages uh, via these LEDs. You can speed them up and slow them down and you would usually use this to go woo, 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 woo in a synthesizer, but we're gonna plug this in to make Mario jump. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is literally plug this into the A button, which I think makes him jump. This LED is coming from the actual LFO that we just saw. And as you can see, it is making Mario jump. Now I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit and just see what the heck happens before it runs out of time.
Yeah, that's working. So I'm going to make him go forwards. So he's moving forwards reasonably slowly with every LFO push. Hey, he's doing it, but now you can't jump because there's nothing plugged in to the jump button. So what do we need to do? I've got another LFO module over here, so I'm going to plug this into the A button and see what happens. Put it into A, which is jump. Now he's jumping, you can see it's flashing, and that's every time it's telling him to jump, that's a button push. So every LED that flashes is a button push. You can see that? He's going, he's going. Oh, he jumped over! Come on, come on, you can do it! Oh, it needs to jump more longer. One sec, I'm just gonna adjust the LFO. This is the synth playing Super Mario. Oh, yes, it's, I have a feeling we might pass it. Jump! <laughs> oh no! This is, this is really exciting actually. So remember, this is a reasonably brain dead experiment. We've literally got that LFO module going forwards and we've got that LFO module telling it to jump and it's all just going, go forwards, do it. And then these are plugged into this and that is all that is going and we're actually getting a reasonable way through the, uh, the actual game. So let's, uh, let's just uh, carry on and see if we can get to the end. I'm gonna sit here and not adjust it all. Right, let's go. Here we go, so this is just, we're just waiting for, ah, uh, we lost. You can do this, you can do this, Mario. Oh! Yes, here we go, it's jumping, jumping, jumping. Come on, come on, Cosmo. Jump! So I'm reasonably confident now, actually, that I will be able to beat the first level, even with just two low frequency oscillators and depending at which, rate, which ratio of speed they are going into the A button and the go forward button on this custom controller, I reckon we can actually beat the first level of Super Mario with a modular synthesizer, literally just two, two LFOs. Without further ado, let's begin. All right, let's go. Okay. It's about, come on, come on. Jump! I can't make it over it. There we go. <clears throat> Jump! Okay. Oh, yes, it did it! No! Oh. gonna die. Well, it's evident that it's going to take quite a long time to uh, be able to complete and even get close to the end of the level. There was a couple of times which I was reasonably close. I seem to remember the ending being a little bit further on, but annoyingly it's just a little bit too uh, unreliable. I'd love to see it work, but I think that we need to add another couple of uh, levels into this. So let's make this modular synth a tiny little bit less brain dead, shall we? This thing, which is a light dependent resistor, and basically what it does is it increases in, is what it does is it increases in resistance uh, when it gets darker on top of it. So the idea is to tape some of these straight to the screen. <laughs> so I've got these teeny weeny light dependent resistors and I have two of them taped straight to the screen. These two are basically wired up to this module right here, which is basically the module that I used for the power glove a few, uh, a while back. When an obstacle comes into view of this one on the TV screen, it makes it jump. Uh, the problem is, is it sometimes jumps into troughs. This one is there to try and stop it from jumping too early into and then ending up landing inside a trough and killing itself. So um, it's a bit silly and yeah, there is still the LFO that's telling it to jump. So it's a mixture of these different things to sort of help it along its way. Oh, oh, it's jumping differently. Oh, it's jumping at the right 
I missed that one. Oh, it saw that one there. Why are you jumping? <laughs> the problem is the background is the same colour as some of the bad things. Kind of locks it up a bit. Yeah, it gets stuck here because of the background. This might have a better... Ah! Oh. So the annoying thing about Super Mario is it has a background and you can see these big green humps right there. Well, the problem is with these sensors is it picks up the green humps! It picks up the humps as well. As you can see, it jumps and then it gets tricked and then it kills Mario. That's the problem. And the sad thing is that other parts that it needs to jump are also green because you could use some sort of filter. But no, we're just, um, look, 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 coming up to green, coming up to green, jumping and then dead. Ah! So the thing is with a tangent like this is I'm not really sure what to do now because I've sort of proved that it could work and if I sat here for long enough, potentially with the initial idea which actually worked better than using sensors on the screen because of the background of Super Mario, like I could probably uh, beat the actual uh, level but I just... I have a feeling there's a better way. Obviously there is a better way that's just playing it. Uh, I know there are some computer simulations to beat it, but that's not what I want to do. I want to solve this problem with the modular synth. I want to get to the end of that first Mario level with this. Ah, uh, Let's try it and I'm going to sit here until it's done. I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure this out. Let's just wait. You wait here. Okay, this is it. I'm just going to try and let it win. First go and it's not actually that bad. Oh. Oh! <gasps> oh, no, very, every time it just needs to come up short to that and then it seems to be. Oh. Oh. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> ah. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Just not, oh, oh, oh. No. This is, yes, yes. I've lost it, the screen's gone, the screen's gone. I was excited, so excited. Did you see that? 1,800. Oh. Now we're on level two. Level two, let's keep on going. Here we go. We are in the shower. Oh yeah, here we go. We managed to make it to this level without even touching a keyboard, keypad. No way. Oh, it's gonna die now. No, no, no way. Oh no, I didn't put backwards. Backwards, need to put backwards in. Ah, I need to get backwards going. Where's backwards? Ah, backwards, backwards, backwards. Go backwards. Go backwards. Oh, whatever. Just, just, come on. Yep, yeah, here we go, here we go. I'm sorry, that was a little bit of a cheat, but... <gasps> no way, no way. Oh my gosh! No way. No way! And we're down. Oh, that is way further than I ever thought was going to be possible. Now game over. We actually got to the second level. Ooh. 
Well, I'm glad we tried again because within 20 minutes I managed to get to the second level twice. There was obviously that part where he needs to walk backwards to be able to go back down again. I had to sort of get in the way and unplug that at that point, but there is a way of doing this smartly. Still with a modular synth, not using computer software or a piece of code that is written to basically just go and do the whole level. Because we can make modules for the modular synth, uh, like a lot of logic gates and or gates, things like this. Comparators may be useful, stuff like this. These are all possible within modular synthesizers. So I think it is more than possible to potentially get to the end of Super Mario by literally using a modular synth plugged in to um, this controller. I really don't know. If you have any ideas, please let me know below because this is quite a bit out of my comfort zone, so please do let me know. Anyway, right now I'm going to go back onto the Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone. I'm nearly there, like I said at the start of the video. There are a few knobs left over, and we are over the next month actually documenting exactly where the knobs are with patrons' names on. Because if you don't know, every single knob on the Thousand Oscillator Mega Drone, it's got about two and a half thousand overall, has the uh, names of people on there. All you have to do is sign up to Patreon, even the lowest tier actually gets a knob on there and you can, yeah, there'll be a picture on my website and there'll be a list of all of the people on the designated panels underneath it. So you'll be able to find your name on the Mega Drone and stuff like that. So if you want your name on it, there are still a fair few left over. Uh, so the link is over there. And this is also funding a museum, which the Mega Drone is gonna be inside. So if you wanna support something that's gonna hopefully get a little bit, little bit more bigger and a bit more community led, then please think about going over to the Patreon and uh, just popping a dollar in or whatever and just supporting this endeavor. And as always, I've been Look Mum No Computer. Don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it. Maybe not this. Maybe don't try this.